Today on the newscast, the Iranian regime preparing to launch satellites into space in the new year. Find out why this could be a direct threat to the U.S. That's next. Hey, folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast and welcome to Dallas. I'm here in the Big D guest hosting TBN's Center Point Show, a great nightly news program. You can catch it tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on TBN, re-air at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We've got some good stuff lined up for Center Point tonight, including an in-depth discussion with the former Department of Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf about the crisis at America's southern border. In the meantime, we've got a continuing crisis in the Middle East in the form of the Iranian regime. We want to get to their latest nefarious activities in a minute. Before I do, a quick programming note. Number one, of course, watch Center Point tonight. But number two, this Thursday, December 22nd at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, and then Friday the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, my exclusive interview with incoming Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu breaking down his brand new book, BB, My Story, which is a great read, and what we can expect from this new government that he will be leading, which will probably happen as soon as this week, folks. He's been in the midst of these coalition discussions. They are pretty much at an end, so I very much expect Benjamin Netanyahu to once again take the prime minister's seat this week. Hey, he's already Israel's longest serving prime minister of 15 years overall. He's about to extend that number. I believe that is a very good thing. So you won't want to miss our interview again this Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern time, Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. He also talks about his influences, what shaped his worldview, why he is, I believe, a Churchillian figure today, the influence of his father, and his brother in his life. So you won't, won't want to miss that. Bibi and the Watchmen coming up. Okay, the Iranian regime, and I mentioned at the top, launching, they announced just today, two satellites into space in March 2023. Now, the Nahid 1 and Nahid 2 satellites are just the latest attempts by the Iranian regime to launch satellites into space. They've claimed successful satellite launches in the past. Uh, Western intelligence and U.S. intelligence have doubted those claims. But we do know, and we reported it here on the newscast back in August 2022, that Russia uh, mounted an Iranian satellite on a Russian rocket, and that launch was indeed successful. We'll talk more about that growing Iran-Russia relationship in a moment. But first, why should you, no matter where you live, be so concerned about the fact that the Iranian regime is launching satellites into space? You may say, hey, other countries have a space program. Uh, here's the rub when it comes to Iran. The technology used to launch those satellites can also be used in Iran's intercontinental ballistic missile program, ICBM for short. Now, those ICBMs are designed for one reason and one reason only, to be mounted with a nuclear warhead. And folks, they do exactly what their name says. Intercontinental, they're designed to travel across continents, across oceans. Those ICBMs that the Iranian regime is actively developing, they're not for Israel. They're not for Saudi Arabia. They're not even for Europe. They are for the nation that Iran refers to as the Great Satan. That would be the United States, where I am standing right now. So if you live in America, for instance, and you don't believe you have anything to worry about when it comes to Iran's nuclear program, think again. So this satellite launch or these potential satellite launches coming in March could have a major, major impact. Again, as Iran develops this ICBM, which will be deadly technology if Iran does indeed get the bomb, now, if you watch the newscast on a regular basis, you know that I do not believe that Iran will ever get its hands on nuclear weapons, especially not with Benjamin Netanyahu taking the helm in Israel yet again. I believe a day is rapidly approaching where Israel will be forced to take preemptive military action to eliminate Iran's nuclear weapons facilities. In the meantime, Iran and Russia, as we've been documenting here in the newscast for months now, 
are forging a very close relationship. We saw another indication of that just this morning, Monday, December 19th, early in the morning, Ukraine time, a fleet, that's the only way I can describe it, I think, of Iranian-made drones, those Shahed-136 drones packed with explosives, uh, targeted Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital. Now, according to Ukrainian officials, there were some 20 of these Iranian drones that targeted Kyiv. At least 15 were shot down, but the others seemingly effectively hit their targets in Kyiv. We've seen people killed in these Iranian drone attacks in Ukraine over the past few months. Russia's military is more and more leaning on these so-called Iranian suicide drones or kamikaze drones in its onslaught against Ukraine. And folks, that may only be the beginning because there are persistent reports that Iran will also soon supply Russia with hundreds of ballistic missiles. You may say, what is Russia doing? Why do they need Iranian weapons? Well, why do they need North Korean military hardware as well? Because they need to replenish their supplies, folks. This war in Ukraine is 10 months old now, hard to believe, and it shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. This seems to be a very long campaign. It has not gone well for Russia, needless to say. So now they are looking to Iran uh, for more weaponry to add to their military war machine to their onslaught. Russia and Iran have never been closer. Folks, I repeat, very key point there. Russia and Iran have never been closer. Both sides see this as an absolutely indispensable military alliance. And of course, it has major prophetic implications. I'm thinking of that war of Gog and Magog that the book of Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 talks about that coming latter days coalition led by Russia and including Iran that comes against Israel. Again, in what Ezekiel calls the latter days, here's the good news, that latter days confederation doesn't get very far because the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob reveals himself to the world and to Russia and Iran in a way he hasn't in some 2000 years and they meet their demise on the mountains of Israel. We see the prophetic chess pieces moving on the board right now with this Russia-Iran alliance. We'll have much more coming up surely on that, on the newscast in the coming days. Again, center point tonight on TBN, Netanyahu interview Thursday and Friday later this week on TBN. Until tomorrow from Dallas, thanks so much for joining us. God bless you and remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.